And Shorty was playing once here and he said he liked it. It is a very exciting and nerve-wracking mode. Uh, then especially towards the last round, but in general it is very interesting. So uh, let's have a look at the GPS immediately, I believe. Makes usually the most sense. And I quickly ask Firestorm where he is. Or maybe with my gamepad. Uh, iPad. Da -da -dum. Don't want to tap out. Alright. I think back for GPS. Yes. And let's have a look. I think they fixed this that you can just watch the GPS now. So turn around there. Seems to be like a more normal classic RPG map from the style. Jumping to the right. Turning around here to make these jumps. Quite a lot of jumps here. There's the finish. Alright, so I wrote Firestorm. The start was pretty straightforward, I remember. I don't remember everything. Okay, that was actually a turnaround. And then to the left. And here to the right, into this. Then we jump. Okay. We land. And we jump. Wait, what, what, what did the sign say, the red one? Yeah, we direct jump there, okay. Okay, no, that was correct. Oh. Ah, uh, it was at the bottom. This is very bad with this respawn. It boosts you immediately away from this line. No, okay. This jump. Finish. Ay ay ay. That's a tough map again to learn. Because there's just so much. So many transitions, so many jumps. So many blind parts. Ah, 
Okay, went a bit too low. Very short one, well the author time is still 1 minute 08. Also quite normal I would say for a mini RPG. Scandi again with 109 already. speed do you need? Definitely more than that it looks like. I'm going a bit up these ramps. I will do a training respawn, uh, training run now. I respawn at all the checkpoints. Also here for example I could see that uh, it would be better to jump here from the right. But I'm not completely sure yet. Yeah, and here I need to... Uh get a very tight line. Because ideally I have a nice jump here. But how do I do this the best now? Because if I land early, ah, it was actually a good landing, that's why it still worked. Yeah, this is the way I wanna do it. Uh. thinking about doing a wall hit but I don't know if the penalty will be too strong so it's very important to have no airtime in water pipe naya jumps or not jumps like this and this one I forgot again so here directly to the right make the direct and here keeping the grip so now still a bit diagonal and I need to turn my car to the right Here it would be good to land far on the right side. All right. Hmm. Seems like Firestorm completely forgot that he wanted to play this here. Hmm. 
Oh, look how high I now jumped. Okay, now I got it smooth. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure with this. Uh... Mm. Stop script engine. Try to make it a bit less laggy. I'm not sure with the wall hit, if that's a thing or not. See if I try, hit a good spot. Ah, but now I had it. Now it worked. Where did I hit? Ah. Ah, barely got around here. Hard decision because I feel like I miss a little bit of control over the car but the abrupt uh, slowing down could of course be better overall and if I have to do that myself with braking Okay. Now I seemingly didn't go high enough. Hmm, difficult. I mean, I would probably prefer to hit the wall, it's just annoying that it's very blind and I see it very late. Yeah, beautiful. I got a land bug and my line was already clear for this jump. Didn't change it anymore. Would have been nice to know what time I would have driven.
Damn, I didn't really look for cuts now. I really hope that there is not something again. I mean, so far I cannot really judge on my paces because I couldn't really finish a run. I just deactivated the no respawn time. I deactivated open planet during the seeding. Because it's very lucky on the server with the amount of players we have. Alright, the knockout is starting. 75 people this time. 16 players will be in the danger zone next round. I explain the rules again of this format after the first round. As I said, it's not a completely standard classic knockout. It works a little bit different. It is fucking laggy on the survey. Oops. Jumping too far here, so here wanna really go right, I guess. Not dropping into the danger zone that early. Unless something weird happens now. So I can still train a little bit in these first rounds. Phoenix winning with an 108. Nasty Poker with a Prime Sub. Thank you. So the 16 last positioned players will go into the danger zone for the next round. In the first round we had nobody in the danger zone. That's why it's empty when I click on it. Next round the 16 last players from this round will be in the danger zone and they play against each other. All the other players only need to finish. All the other players are safe. They cannot get knocked out if they finish. Only the people that are in the danger zone can be knocked out. And from these 16 players, the bottom 8, the last 8 of those in this round now, they will get eliminated. And after those people are then out of the knockout, when the plug and check goes out, then it checks again from all the surviving players who are now the last 16 players and those will then get into, into the danger zone in the next round so you basically don't get knocked out with just one round you get knocked out within two rounds first you need to get into the danger zone and then in the danger zone you need to be in the worst 50 percent so that it knocks you out at some point it will switch from, uh, only, uh, from the last 16 players to only the last 8 players, and so on. This is how I need it. Basically two bad rounds in a row. That was not however the case how I got knocked out most of the times. In the end, when there is one round with not so many crashes, it is you can have even good pace and it's still not enough when you get into the danger zone. You can have a good position even. But uh, you beat the players that get eliminated. And so your position actually seems pretty nice from the amount of players that are still in. But you still end up in the danger zone next round. And if you then, 
it always depends who you have in the danger zone as opponents. If you then end up with really strong opponents, then you can get eliminated easily. Even, like, uh, let's say the last four out of eight players get eliminated, you can finish in fifth place out of every player, but four of your danger zone partners were in front of you, you're knocked out with the fifth place. So not necessarily it has to be a bad round, but in the beginning now of this knockout, the players that get eliminated here, that get knocked out, are usually the players that uh, crash twice, have uh, twice pretty bad rounds. I was always over jumping, so I try to jump shorter now. Didn't perfectly work. So, at the beginning, it's a bit difficult to use the danger zone here to check who's still in, who's out. Because I think there should be uh, 16 players in here. And it can't show 16 players on one page, but it will change now. In the next uh, round, only the last 8 players will be in danger zone. So if I go into a safe zone, everyone under this uh, white line will become, is either out or will become danger zone player next round. And in the danger zone, everyone under this white line is eliminated. Okay, 107.9 is equal to 5th place. The first rounds here are very good for yeah, trying to get some pace. Also Firestorm would have been really good on this map, it's very keyboard friendly, I would say. So the plugin now quickly shows who's knocked out, who's in. We have now Saitzer in orange and also Uso. Both should make it, they just drive a normal run, but that are now the 
biggest uh, names together with this DRX guy. And Uso was in the final last week. Uh, somehow this is so unclear to me how the car will steer there. Now you see an orange number on my car, that I will come on again. This means I would be in the danger zone if I finish with this uh, position. Now it's white again, which means I will be in the safe zone with this result. Doesn't matter necessarily what position it is, because the position might change between... Also for what you need for the... Now wait, let me focus for a moment. <laughs> what position the border is between getting safe zone or getting danger zone next round, that might also change from checkpoint to checkpoint depending on how many players are in the danger or are behind you and ahead of you from the players that get eliminated. So you see I'm 33rd and now the gap is between 40 and 41st at the moment. And someone like Holo is under the line so he will be in the danger zone next round. In the danger zone itself we have the three that uh, we kinda expected. They all made it through and these four are out. Yeah, especially when you see that uh, Jan also crashed in that round. No, he, he crashed in that round, so it was a super free run and he would have been out as well. And the other guy drove yeah, for a long time a very good final round, but then completely messed up online and his time was very easy to beat. Basically I did beat his time every round. Um, really mad, was really winnable, very easily winnable. Uh, where to go? Ach ja, I forgot the way. There, there are so many moments in this map where you actually uh, drive towards a quarter pipe. Drive up a quarter pipe and often you have to go to the right. <laughs> yeah. Difficult to remember where you are on the map. But yeah, it was not a random slider that I had, I was jumping. I never jumped that much though. I didn't know you can actually get that much airtime. I was just this tiny bit further left and car jumped and then I was uh, landing to turn around. Yeah. I might forget the track here. It's a very bumpy map here. All these jumps.
105. He has already won. I mean, so far I would say that's doable. I can get there. So it looks like Artis will be in a danger zone next round. Also, Wingo Beer. That's already big names. Oh, Poke is out. Uso was the second time in the danger zone, but won it again. Yeah, this is now actually a good, a good danger zone. This is a good danger zone. There are a lot of decent names in there. Okay, so my issue is uh, mostly the start. So I had a look now. In the beginning, I lost already 1.3 seconds at the first like 20 seconds. In the middle section, I managed to not lose anything. I was equal to first. And in the ending, I lost uh, again 7 tenths. So, Wingo Beer, Seitzer, Artis, and Jam are in, but look at that. A 12th place, and we still have 40 players driving. We still have 40 players, but a 12th place was actually out. With only 3 seconds behind, first you were out. So that would have been also for me already a very dangerous and difficult... Uh... Also I would have survived it. But it would have been close. And that's like the unlucky part, no? This guy that got knocked out barely now. It was just the wrong round to be in the danger zone. In other rounds he would have been the first place of the danger zone. Now he goes out. Did he deserve to go out? Did he have a bad second round? No, he didn't have a bad second round. He drove pretty good. But it really depends on who you actually drive against. And how these people perform in that round. Now, for example, Uso is again in the danger zone and he is surviving with 9 seconds plus. And there were also good names behind him. It was also a decent. Uh, like, Ice is in the danger zone and just gets first. <laughs> ah, Saito is going into the danger again. Whew, similar to some other weeks, I miss a little bit pace. It's mainly the start. I need to, uh, as long as I'm in the safe zone, I need to uh, 
try a bit more because yeah, if I crash, I'm at least not out immediately. Saito and Morpheo. Morpheo for the first time now. I mean, I'm pretty sure I do something wrong. It's so easy to do something wrong there, I would think. So I'm already six tenths ahead, uh, behind. Ah. Yeah, and this happens when you then try to figure out what you do wrong, and you have the, all the time the the interface open, no? Then something like this happens. I looked at the checkpoint differences and that made me respawn. Yeah, no chance I'm too far away. So now we have to hope that I don't get two good opponents here. In this danger zone, Morpheus out. And Seitz as well. What the heck? Shinex Eria Ice Artis. Oh no. It is a fucking difficult one. <laughs> oh my god. Eyes Artis. Okay. I have a shit left. Oh, I made it in. Dude, I'm 6th place! Out of 28! <laughs> Shinix is 13th and he is the second last! Of the danger zone. <laughs> what a crazy... Like, huh? And if I get knocked out at this spot, yeah, then my position, you will see now, the position of these players, 25th, you are 25th, because you got 7th. In the round you got knocked out, yeah? And then your overall position is 25th. It is crazy. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> uh. So at least it worked without respawn, so I may be still able to get in into the save. But at this point you definitely need already some pace.
No, we have another one. <clears throat> oh, I have Ortiz again as opponent. Yannix is out. I have again Ortiz as opponent. <clears throat> Hostile, Viper, Ortiz and Better Toast, Flo, Dobri, myself and Speedsel. Scheiße. Yeah, I'm out because of the shock fucking respawn now. I got a bug before, that's why I had to jump so far to the left. I easily would go in here in such a round. Uh. The thing is, I had everything under control, it felt like, but then I got this one landing. <clears throat> right at the bottom you have these two jumps down and then you have the right turn and jump up to the checkpoint and at the bottom the car landed extremely shit. And then I wasn't sure if I even make it into the CP because I realized the car got slower, I had a bug there and I felt immediately okay I need to go a bit wider in this corner now uh, in order to make the jump to the checkpoint and that was the reason why I tried to uh, uh, yeah, be as left as possible basically also in the jump and uh, yeah, didn't make it onto the road. I didn't even need to be that far left, I realized then in the jump. The respawn of course is very very annoying. Um, I should have maybe practiced how uh, the safe way is with that respawn, so I guess there is a higher... So here at this landing I fucked. Uh, I think there is a high jump possible, uh, the green sign shows that. But with that I wouldn't have made it in. Also that was also clear already, uh, just doing... A respawn there and then jumping high, I would have been too slow with that. This is quite an easy round. Yeah, that's annoying. I didn't really get into the floor. I think I was decent here for like driving 107 then. That would have worked out pretty well and easy I guess. I was still a bit trying to figure out how to get a 106. The thing is there are already a lot of good players out. We already lost Morpheo, we already lost Yannex. Now we had um, Artis very often in the danger zone and he is now again. Maybe I can figure out what the, what the line is. Yeah, nice. Scandia gets actually a nose slide. I just the confidence with these landings there. 
Ah, here he goes a lot lower than me. I did a completely different line. That's why I was also late in the CP. I mean, theoretically, I should have a bit more speed after the landing then. No, there are two danger zone players. Ah, no, only one. Okay, we have a battle actually. Dark versus Artis is a battle. Artis is a bit ahead of Dark. And Vortex is ahead of them. Oh! Dark snipes! By 14,000, Artis is down. Oh my god, I saw that. But um, looking at these local records, we have such a Scandiamania again. It's just literally a second in front of the second best local. As he does the same start that I did. Sometimes I went a bit too short. But this landing, the way he lands and he immediately has the confidence that the car will have the correct angle and will drive correctly into this turn. This is like the difference. I'm never completely sure. I'm never completely confident. What if I land and the car is driving a little bit stronger into the turn or less strong into the turn and it just doesn't fit? Then I have like no... Also the way he drives, he has then no time to react on it, you know? That That's like the issue. But yeah, he's now on another 105, that's for sure. Yeah, this turn here was a bit unclear, but yeah, okay, it looks like this. So. Yeah, we just saw an improvement by 2000s. A typical Scandier just driving this consistent. This is a very bad round now here in the danger zone. Varus and Bands completely out. Yeah, with those things I'm just not confident at all. Especially because it's such a tight section afterwards. It's different when there is a lot of space, but when there's something tight, and especially in a knockout format, if you crash here at this landing, then you won't make this jump, and then you're out. No, then you will drop into danger, or if you're in danger, then... No. So, also especially in such a case, I cannot really go for that risk. So they are not doing the wall hit. Actually, the wall hit worked pretty okay for me. Oh, that's very low. But he survives, of course. Okay, let's have a look at the danger zone. Uh, one guy is missing. And this guy is far behind. So safe survives again. Ice, uh, ice is so often, actually, in this... Uh, Danger zone. <laughs> He's usually then doing a very good time there, but it's crazy how often he ends up there.
You see that? This is the part where Scania just overtakes everyone. Oh, I didn't think that if you land like this, you would have enough speed for that jump. The way I did it. This is why I jumped from above. I didn't believe that uh, it could work the way he did it now. We have actually a fight. Dupri is still in now. He was in danger quite often already. But always survived these rounds. Dark was very often in danger zone last week. He got then into the... Yeah, now he's out. And Dupri is again in. And another first place. A 104 now by Skandir. Why not? It's crazy. This guy is not normal. Like how can you drive such difficult and precise jumps and transitions and uh, tight turns so consistently? Like it's not just doing consistent, he's improving every round. The same for Max Verstappen spin, uh, stints, like uh, long stints in the testing. Yeah, He didn't get slower, he got faster every time and without any bad round in between. I guess Gandhi is Max Verstappen and he tries on Red Bull. That would also explain why he is a second ahead. It's Vortex versus Beta Twist now in the danger zone. It's always now the last two guys and then they have a 1v1. And currently they are third and second. Oh, that's. He actually still landed nicely, wow. Betas was jumping super high, but he gets good speed and Vortex had a bad landing shortly in between. But yeah, look at that. Vortex could become third out of seven players and be eliminated. He could also become second if Beta Twist wins and Vortex is eliminated. This is like how this uh, system works. He has just the wrong opponent right now if this doesn't change. But it will be super close. Now Betatus could be the unlucky guy. And he is. Meanwhile, Scandi of uh, yeah, winning. But look at this danger zone. A 106. Also, imagine, yeah? You get into the danger zone. And now look at these local records. And you say, ah, in the danger zone, I try for 106.7. Okay, actually, many people beat that already. But only by a little bit. You would think, yeah, 106.7 is a time that I would like to drive in the danger zone. I'm fine with that. And then you actually get knocked out <laughs> by doing that. It's crazy. It's, it's just crazy. Yeah, Beta Tooth Root, he doesn't get the end. He always lost 0.5 in the end there. We see that people opt for different ways to turn around there. Our new danger zone is now Ice versus Hazard. That's quite interesting. And they are also neck, neck and neck here, side by side. Oh, Hazard is doing it the other way. Okay. And it worked. It actually worked. This could be an interesting fight. I mean, at this point, I am, of course, more for Hazard. Because Ice is a direct opponent of my of me. And the amount of wins, even though the battle for fourth place shouldn't matter. Well, Hazard is through. That was also a very good danger zone. As a Hazard true for... 106.6. This is what you had to beat. Scandi was pretty slow this round. He drove only 105.6. That's actually not that great. Yeah, and we have the same. Then last round, Ice gets third out of six players, but he is out. And the other three that he has beaten, they are all in. They can still continue. They drove a shit lap. They might drive shit now and still survive. He is out.
Oh! Oh, it's still enough to make the jump. Nah, I didn't think. I didn't think he would make that. But this is exactly what I'm afraid of, to touch there. Uh, we have uh, Dobri this time also most likely out, especially as Dessel did survive the section, didn't get this bad respawn that I had. And the respawn is really the issue. Oh! Also, you don't want to be in the danger zone next round. So Dessel, you better overtake. Oh! Oh! This is an important fight and Vortex is in. A 107.1 winning time. Yeah, in this moment here, in such a round, you definitely don't want to be the guy <laughs> that goes into the danger zone with Skandir. Because this is now only dependent on Skandir. It only matters if Skandir survives this round or not. And uh, despite that, he's now in danger, so yeah, we will see how fast he will drive. Uh, the thing is, of course, that looks so close with the pole already. The thing is, of course, the first place of this round is guaranteed in the grand final already. And usually Skandi is taking that first place and isn't already in the final, qualified. And from the guys that are still in, there are not that many fast. Also that fast, also nobody is as fast as him. He has now a 1.4 gap. <laughs> What is Dessel's PB? Oh, that was close for Scan here. Dessel is 12. Also he came pretty far with that. But it was obvious that you can get far. You just try 108s or 107 high, then you can get far. He's doing a decent lap. 8 tenth. But important is also this the case that Scandi is getting the first place because that secures him another grand final. So he had one bad round but it was still impossible to knock him out then. So Dessel out and it didn't really matter what Hazard and Vortex were doing, they had to try to get first. That was their only way that this round matters for them. It was their only chance to make it, to make it worth. Now they are in this 1v1 fight, Vortex had some snipes. That is a very, very short turn by a Vortex. And he did not make it perfectly, but it, he survived. He loses time with it, but he was lucky to survive. He gets this section pretty nicely. Now, however, Hazard has this alternative line. He lost a bit towards Scandia, not much really. Oh, Scandia dead, but doesn't matter, he only needs to finish. He is in the final anyway. But uh, at least he makes some mistakes now, which maybe makes him a bit more nervous towards the grand final. Especially if he has to play against Hazard, but that's still not sure. Vortex had always good endings. Ah, but he touches there. Ah, I touched there as well, of course, once. 106.5 was Hazard's time. Yeah, so, the thing is, Hazard is like the biggest locker ever. He didn't play better than me, but he got multiple wins. Especially has won twice against Skandir already, because Skandir is shaking, he's failing against Hazard for whatever reason. And because that's the case, this is even still an open final. Like, I was usually just hoping that, no, Skandir is uh, beating Hazard, but in this case now, with the amount of wins mattering, it's actually good for me if Hazard takes the win. That was, however, a very bad round, but Hazard is usually not really performing in the grand finals. He's just lucky that Skandir fails at some point. Also Hazard's run is good, apart from this one part. There he definitely had way too much airtime in this quarter pipe jump. Otherwise he's doing good. 
maybe Scandia is also saving it a li little bit because we still have, a, have it quite close. And we know that Scandia has a 1.4 seconds better PB. So. Oh, oh no, this is he's actually choking it again. It Hazard is so lucky. I, okay, draw is a good time, but still. How is Scandia never failing against me, but always failing against Hazard? <laughs> Again, this is the third time Hazard beat Scandia in the final because Scandia is just failing. And I was four times in the final against Scandia. He was never failing. <laughs> oh, this is so typical. Land bug again, like always. Naja, also he was landing extremely far left. <laughs> it's hard to say if... Uh, it's hard to say... If there should have been no land bug, because d did he not touch then the wall? Also it looked like he didn't touch, but it, he just barely over jumped the edge. Maybe it still counted like he just touched it slightly. He was definitely not having good speed in that jump. He jumped extremely diagonal so that he just barely even got to the platform. It was not completely surprising that he got a slowdown, even though you couldn't really see that he touched something. Naja, the next cup is starting here. Usually, as the last times, we didn't really have players there. That's crazy how many victories Hazard gets gifted. Every time that he gets into the final against Gandia, he gets a win. Also, usually three win. In this case now, I wouldn't say that it was three because he drove a 106.3 and uh, that is uh, basically second local or very close to it. And uh, uh, Scandia was right behind that. But it was like this typical how such a final has to go. Scandia is shaking a bit and makes even small mistake maybe near the start that he doesn't really go far in front. Then uh, he is still in front because Hazard had that airtime. But then Scandia is like saving it a bit because he just wants to bring it uh, home. He just wants to bring it through. Yeah. Where, where does this... I saw here. Just wants to bring it through, you know. But because it because it drives like that, it remains relatively close, and in the end, ah, the RPG players are playing again. This cup, okay. Is this the map? Oh, hi, Firestorm. This is discovery I... cup now. Yeah, I know. Yeah, where have you been before? <laughs> I was busy. Yeah. Yeah, you can also play the random cup of the week afterwards, it's anyway a more interesting cup than... Also this cup here was very boring the last times, but not today, because now the RPG players are joining again at least. Okay. Uh, the other times I w we were only three players, me and two... Yeah, that just play also saw all the cups a bit, but yeah, different level, let's say. Hmm. Uh. What is this? I thought maybe uh, this is the way to do it. Ah, no. But yeah, this should be the map that we play. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, usually the maps are weirder than this, so... Uh, the... the... Club is called Plus, also P L U S T M, also for my chat, and the uh, uh, name is Discovery Cup. But you have to search the, for the club because if you search for Discovery, it will be difficult to find. Also, search for Plus T M, I think it's called.
Upsala, hula. There's no elimination this round. Hmm. Maybe. It's actually a bit RPG like, so this might be difficult this time. I actually, the last edition two weeks ago, last week it didn't happen, but the last edition two weeks ago actually was uh, called uh, RPG edition. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, cup for uh, the, the map. Yeah, it doesn't have much to do with RPG though. <laughs> the bitch wolf there. Yeah, one fit in, I would tell, I would say, uh, go for the red line, the risky line. That is probably easier than the safe line in the end. Also, for the risky, you can just go slow over the tube, and it's fine. <laughs> I don't understand the safe way. That looks much more difficult to even survive. So we have another new elimination round. For some reason it's always two here. When we were only three players, the admin just did four new elimination rounds before it went live. That was okay. like unnecessary. <laughs> Did you see how Hazard was lucky again? Yes. Author time, yay. Hmm. Also, I think you could have done well with on uh, Rally Corn Ice. Really? I, I mean, I played a bit of the campaign and I didn't really like the gameplay of it. Of Rally Car yeah, on ice. Well... I mean, it's all about understanding it kinda. Mm. Uh, like anyone was able to win who understands this somehow. Oh, we're alive. This party is shit. Yeah. No. Yeah. I agree. What is the idea for this water section? I have no idea. I'm just bouncing two times and don't ice slide. Yeah, I guess I guess it's better than to uh, 
break or release before you go into the water because my second bounce is basically at the end mm. of the duel. You wanna bounce before. Or is it a bad idea even to uh, take the reactor boost beforehand? No, I think that extra speed is nice. <laughs> it's just very useful. It sounded so sarcastic the way you said it. No, <laughs> I mean it. You're very <laughs> slow without it. Ah, okay. Is this full speed the star? I'm so confused with the I, custom. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's not full speed. No. <laughs> I try to go full speed now as well, as long as I can. Oh yeah, this jump in with a flag. Oh god. Super weird. I said played uh, this cup when we were only three. They are not now on the server, mm -hmm. even though we are suddenly so many people. Now they are missing. Well, they've had a bad experience. It's actually crazy uh, how the level is already. Like it's the strongest discovery cup I've ever witnessed. So many <laughs> players, and already now. Ah, yeah, okay. We have 15 seconds here. <laughs> He didn't finish even yet. Not his as well. Okay. Oh yeah, they hunt now because of the DNF on side. So. <laughs> Super safe type. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I don't want to risk it as well. I have the feeling there will be the moment where we need to. Mm. But it's an okay map. Honestly. There's a lot of Neo slides. Did he do that? Mm -hmm. Does he make it with one bounce over the edge? No, I, I didn't see it exactly, but he was just so far left and I don't know how. Well, you crushed the ending. I think he tried to go for WR for PB. Maybe he risked the jump. Oh. Ah! Yeah. If he zooped it. Yeah, okay. I know that you can get it like that, but I didn't think it was not so powerful. That's kind of risky though, if you don't get it. That's not a problem, like I cannot really test it out now anymore in the knockout. Like, oh wow, poke is still in. <laughs> yeah. again with a mistake. Yeah, I, I cannot uh, test it out now if it would work out with one single bounce to get over that. I tried it, but it's difficult. Now, yeah, what is it, where is the difficulty? If you have to zoom. Then it's just PF, kinda. Yeah, okay, Either you but get or not. Yeah, you need to get the zoop. Of course, a second loss or something if you go for the release and two bounces. He seems to be consistent with it. So just risk the end. take the turn full speed over the pipe <laughs> you're gonna miss it anyways and then you bounce in and then perfect it's like two seconds hmm.
Ja. He bounced two times, he saved it. And I know slid. Is this going to be a risk over the pipe? Yeah, but for all of us. What happened? Was just the same pace kind of over the pipe? Uh, no, uh, I hit the left side on the exit of the pipe. <laughs> that was just stupid. Go, go. After the dirt ice slide. Oh, never mind. Oh, what? Okay. After the dirt ice slide, where you're so slow, go on the right part. Yeah, you don't get airtime that way. Uh, I don't see you. Yeah, okay. I meant you went in the middle, so you got airtime that way. It doesn't matter. A risk? Mm. <clears throat> Atis did it without the slide. He, he slowed down and just went straight, no slide, and then he had more speed. About what part are you talking now? Uh, about the ice dirt slide. He didn't angle his car 90 degrees, mm. he just went straight and then just turned around. Oh, also a normal uh, drift dirt turn? Yeah, just a normal turn. Oh. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. But there were too many lines I didn't know then mm. for winning this. And I had even a small crash. And after that, <laughs> go on the right. Oh, never mind. 